Hey you guys, it's me Richard with Nightmares, Tears Anyone. And as you can see, I've got my cool ass Pennywise shirt on with the little SS Georgie right there. And I'm also going to be uh, revealing a new piece of art. Uh, let me grab that. So yeah, the piece of art is right here. Um, it's going to be given away when I hit a certain amount of subscribers. Uh, plus, I'm gonna be going over a huge vintage horror book haul that a friend just sent me. So, come back after the intro, you guys. Hey, welcome back. It's me, Richard, with Are You... Uh, I almost said Are You Into Horror. I'm not no longer Are You Into Horror. I'm still into horror, but that's not my name. It's Nightmares. Cheers, anyone. Uh, first off, I want to welcome some new subscribers to the channel. Uh, so, in no particular order, let's welcome Alexandra M., Elaine Davis, Superstrike77, Gerald Z. Baines, Steph, Tony, and Max B, and Adam Satterley. And speaking of Adam Satterley, he's the one that has been a friend of mine on my Paperback Swap account for, we've probably been friends for 15 years. We're both horror fans. He lives in Idaho, and he's, he emailed me a couple weeks ago and said, Richard, I'm getting ready to move. I need to get rid of all my books. Uh, do you want a, a, a big box of vintage horror paperbacks? And he kind of knows my list because he knows, you know, what I trade, what I, you know, he, he, he just, he knows my on paperback swap. He knows my request list just like I know his. So, uh, yeah, he sent me a, a, a box of books the other day, and there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 books that I got in this first box, and he emailed me and said he's got a second box coming. So, hey, Adam, I want to say thanks so much. So that's what uh, the basis of today's video is going to be, is a vintage book haul, and then... Uh, I want to talk to you quickly about what I've been reading and what I got in the mail yesterday. So, just finished The Burning Girls last week. Uh, that's going to be a review coming up. Um, and like I said, I got another book that I pre-ordered yesterday in the mail. Actually, like always, I ordered two, had to send one back. Uh, I don't know how I do it. Sorry, you guys, I got sunscreen on my face, so my face is kind of shining today. So let's get into this uh, vintage book haul. And speaking of books and friends, uh, those of you that follow me on Goodreads, I've been reading Jonathan Jan's Children of the Dark. And I just talked to my friend Larry Yance, who lives on the East Coast, He's, we're going to buddy read it, so he's going to start reading it today or tonight. Uh, I'm only 80 pages into it, so hey, Larry, I can't wait to read another book with you. It's always a blast when I do buddy reads with you. So let's get into this uh, stack of 14 books. So sorry about the uh, glare, you guys. The first one is from, uh, I'm not going to do these in uh, publishing order. This is from 1981 from Tor Books. This is by R.R. R. Walters, Ludlow's Mill. And it's funny because Adam's books are just like brand new, just like mine are. I hate to trade a book that's tore up. 
This is Ludlow's Mill. Very badass cover. Now, you guys might see a couple of these books or recognize a couple of these books from years ago from my old channel. Uh, but, but hey, I will trade the ones that were beat up or a little bit beat up because all these ones that I got from Adam are like brand new. I don't even think he's even read half of them. So yeah, Ludlow's Mill, it says the Lamia. She lies in wait, age-old evil, ready to strike. In the small, sleepy Florida town, there are the ruins of an ancient mill, dreaming under the hot sun, birdsong trilling from the surrounding pines. It is Karen Summer's favorite place. The lovely young widow often goes there with her little boy to paint and dream. It is an introduction to horror so profound that you will never be the same again. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, I'm going to go through these pretty quick so I can get through all 14 of them. So, uh... I was going to say, if I'm going too fast for some of you guys, just let me know. But this isn't a live video. So, the next one is, uh, what year? This is from May of 1983. And this is a Dell book. This is LJ Keys, The Spawn. And if you look, there's really cool, like, demonic eyes and stuff in the trees yeah it says uh in the darkening menace of night they are watching they are waiting they are aching to kill again a blood chilling novel of horror and suspense yeah once again a book that looks like it's maybe been cracked once but big deal so this has got a really long back i'm not going to read that one because i do want to get through these uh, the next one is a leisure horror book. Yes, we all love our leisure horror. Well, I do. Some of you don't. Some of you guys think it's really cheesy. Mm -hmm. This is from 1987. This is Robert W. Walker's Salem's Child. And believe it or not, I think I've only read one of the books in this entire stack. So, yeah, that is... Uh, it says he carried the evil like a disease and only death was the cure. Uh, yeah. That's Salem's Child. Never read that book. And you guys, like always, if you've read any of these books, leave a note down below. I would love to talk to you about the books. Just don't, just don't post any spoilers. Uh, this one is from 1982. This is a Bantam book. This is by uh, Dennis M. Clausen. This is Ghost Lover. Yeah says uh 30 years ago he died for love now he will get his revenge says it's a reincarnation novel of terror and horror so hey with valentine's day came coming up in just a couple days very cool cover uh i think this i think i read this one oh my god back in the 80s so uh this is from 1985 by hans holzer this is a leisure horror, and it says on the spine, nonfiction, but we all know better. It says, revealed at last, the evil force that doomed so many to a hideous fate. This is The Secret of Amityville. Yeah, looks like an old lady, huh? Yeah, I think I read this, oh my God, I think I read this the year it came out. I, I've read all, um, there's been like 11 books written about Amityville Horror. Uh, this one I've never read. I have seen this book before, but I don't own a copy. Uh, I am looking forward to reading this. This is from 1991. This is a Jove novel of horror, and it's by James Neal Harvey. This is The Headsman. Now, some of these books, I think, when, he sent, when Adam sent them to me, he's never even read these books. This book has never been cracked open. Yeah. This one says a suspense-filled novel of terror guaranteed to chill, thrill, and utterly shock the reader. For over two centuries, the town of Braddock has been haunted by a terrifying legend. In colonial times, the town executioner piled his trade with a huge double-bladed axe. Some say he still walks the night searching for sinners to punish. They call him the headsman. Today, parents use the legend to make their children behave. Karen Wilson, oh my God, that's my sister's name. Karen Wilson doesn't believe such stories until a high school girl is beheaded with an axe. Now, the town is gripped by terror and suspicion. One by one, others are murdered. 
and Karen witnesses each horrible death through the killer's eyes. Now, this is kind of funny because my sister Karen is the one that Ted Bundy took to a uh, school dance one time. Yeah, and she was also uh, commented and noted upon in the book Headshot. Yeah, she was that one that, yeah, she was a bad girl, I think, back in the uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's been in a couple horror um, things. So that's funny that her name is uh, Karen Wilson in that one. The next one is a Signet Horror book. I used to love Signet Horror. I used to collect all, uh, tons of them. I still have tons of them. This is by Robert Craig. This is from 1982. This is Creepers. Another one. I don't think it's ever been cracked open. Um, it says on the front, take a ride on the terror train with a conductor called Death, a novel of unspeakable horror. Yeah, you can see the guy. Hopefully it's not an alien book. Uh, can't get into alien books, I don't know why. As much as aliens scare me, I just can't get it. I don't think they're horror. Uh, this is a Warner book. This is uh, another book I've never read. Um, I have seen it before. This is from 1981. This is The Keepsake. And if you can see, there's like a, looks like a face coming through a shattered windshield of a car. This is from Paul Hewson. And it says, out of the darkness, a horror darker still. It says, well, that's a way to do it. I'll just do it this way. You guys can put it on pause. And read the back. So once again, never read that one. Only 320 pages. Uh, this one I think I have read. Um, this author was a hit and miss author for me in the 80s and 90s. Uh, he does have a cult following though. Um, this is a zebra horror. Another publisher that I cannot get enough of is my zebra horror. Anytime I find zebra horror, um, I pick them up. This is from 1982. This is Rick Hautala's Moon Bog. And actually, I think this is one of his first horror books. It says, Hautala's new book is an impressive novel of suspense and dark horror, says Stephen King. So what? Um, <laughs> yeah, Rick Hautala is no longer with us anymore. Um, yeah. And uh, it's some kind of a horror that lives in the swamp book. Another, another book that I've never read. I've uh, never read this one either. I have seen it. Uh, my cousin used to talk about this book quite a bit. Um, she liked this book, actually. Um, this is a Dell book by Robert L. Duncan. This is from 1984. It says, A Town Gripped by Terror. A Man with Murder in His Heart and a Lust to Kill. A Nerve-Shattering Novel of Suspense. This is Robert L. Duncan's In the Blood. Very bloody axe right there. Leaving a partridge in a pear tree with a valentine heart. Yeah. And it says evil, killing, obsession. Uh, yeah. So that's another one I've never read. It's kind of a shame that he had to get rid of these books because he was moving. This is an Avon horror book by uh, Claire McNally. She wrote the Ghost House series of books. Uh, there were four of them. This is from 1988. This is Addison House, come home if you dare. And it says, what is the secret of Addison House? Very cool, badass cover. These were the days when uh, horror books had great covers. Um, yeah, the artists put in tons and tons of hours to do the, the cover art. And um, I don't really think cover artists made that much money either for the work. Uh, this is another zebra horror book. This is from what year? This is from Stephen Gresham. Stephen Gresham is another one. Sometimes he's hit, sometimes he's missed. This is from 1986. Uh, it says, It's withered black talons were closing around his soul. Dew claws. Yeah, zebra horror was always known for doing those skeleton covers. And you guys, you couldn't go wrong with them. Hey, it sold books. Every time I saw one in a, in a bookstore... I would pick it up every every week. Every Tuesday there were new uh, zebra titles that came out every single week. So it was it was a it was a selling thing and it worked. Uh, this is another pocket horror book. Um, this one came out in 
1985. Can you guys hear the cat? The cat's at the door and so is the dog. This is from Harriet Steinberg. It says, one by one, the gruesome postcards came. Warning of Warnings of blood, of terror, of death. Wish you were here. Hmm. Looks like one of those uh, good girls gone bad. These girls look like the girls that aren't very popular as this Joan Collins wannabe slam. Sl skanky slut. She's going to get killed first, I'm sure. She's going to be the girl that shows her boobs. You know, hey. And it says, uh... <laughs> He killed once, he'll kill again and again until he perfects his art. Yeah, that's another one of those books. Not a very big book. It's only got uh, 207 pages. So this will be one of those books that he just slams, cuts, chops them up. And then, well, hopefully he gets killed at the end. Now this one, I think I started years and years and years ago. And I probably picked up something else and didn't finish it. Um, this is another leisure book. This is from 1987. This is Joyce Wolf's. It says, it's spun a web of ultimate horror. This is a very cool cover, too. It's very um, sculpted and textured. This is White Spider. I hate this new ring light. I can't get used to it. So, yeah, the cover is very uh, raised. And there's a spider with sparkly green eyes yeah and it says the innocent she was just 12 years old naive untouched possessed of a pure childish beauty caught in a web of paralyzing fear she was the perfect victim for the white spider once it had been a man now the evil had taken a loathsome new form with an overwhelming desire for sweet young flesh its pursuit was silent its bite was deadly its embrace was forever the white spider so i don't know if it's reincarnation or what but uh yeah those are the books those are the 14 books once again thank you so much adam saturday and uh thanks for subscribing to the channel and speaking of subscribing to the channel if you guys haven't done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button right there ring that bell so you get notifications when i post another one and now i'm gonna reveal um oh no i got another book in the mail yesterday so uh you guys all know I'm a huge, huge BC Anders fan, and I have been since 1970, oh my god, 75, 76, when uh, she was still alive and she published her uh, bestseller, which became a cult worldwide phenomenon, Flowers in the Attic. This one came out yesterday, 2022's, uh, this is... The life story of V.C. Andrews. This is a very cool cover. See how it's embossed with the, with the roses and the vines? This is The Woman Beyond the Attic, the V.C. Andrews story. Uh, it says, you've entered the worlds of V.C. Andrews' making. Now get a glimpse of Virginia Andrews' life. The Woman Beyond the Attic tells Virginia's story for the first time. With tales from her childhood, snapshots at the early days of her career, and accounts of relationships with her closest family members, all told within the context of the books that made her famous. You know there's been 131 titles, and speaking of her titles, Lifetime just acquired every single title in the V.C. Andrews Library, and they're going to be making tons of movies. So, uh, this book has got beautiful, beautiful, uh, color glossy photos of Virginia when she was young. I was uh, going over and looking at some of these photos. It's actually really sad. It's very, very sad because uh, people think that uh, Flowers in the Attic was just fiction. A lot of it had to do with her actual life. Uh, her mother was horrible. Here's a picture of the old bitch right there next to Virginia's um, worldwide fame. That is Virginia's mother, Lillian. Yeah, she's a bitch. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't uh, ordered this or picked it up already, and if you're as big a huge Virgin, uh, V.C. Andrews fan as I am, you guys should pick it up. It's, uh, it's, very, it's a very beautiful book, and uh, it's reminiscent of the same typeset and everything else that uh, the Flowers in the Attic's books were. And uh, like I said, I just finished this last week, so a review will be coming up on that one. And now, let's reveal my 
<laughs> my uh, latest, well, not my latest, I've finished two. Well, no, this is my latest. So this one. It's a diamond painting of we all know who. Yeah, so I'm not saying his name. If you don't know his name, you don't have a very good chance of winning this diamond uh, painting of this horrifying, terrifying creature. He is in front of 39 Meeple Street. There's a red balloon right there. So you guys, I will be giving this away. I will be sending it out to one of you lucky subscribers. All you have to do is down below in the basement right down there uh, not right there that's yeah but down here in the basement just leave the name of who that terrifying creature is all you have to do is put his name in your description say hi um, when I hit a certain number of subscribers I'm getting pretty close you guys all know I had to start all over I was almost up to 3,000 before on the old channel but hey I'm doing it over again. I'm having a blast. I'm having a ball, you guys. I love to talk to you about horror. So make sure you leave a comment in the basement down there and leave the name of that terrifying character. Not who played him, his name. Because that's how I'm going to draw it. I'm going to key in his name. I do a random comment picker. And yeah, one of you guys will be getting that uh, really cool, creepy ass diamond painting. So you guys, I want to welcome. I, I want to welcome. I want to say thanks again so much to Adam Satterley for sending me the uh, books. Can't wait to get the second book. And you guys, as always, be kind to people. Be nice. Uh, have great nightmares. Have scary nightmares. Uh, pick up a good book. Uh, pick up a good scary book. You guys, it's great to be scared. I love being scared. I'm a big chicken shit, and I love it. But hey, you guys, as always. I will see you in the next video. Make sure you leave a comment below. I love to talk about horror. And Larry Yance, yes, I sent you an email response back. Let's read Children of the Dark together. It, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. And hey, um, what else? Live your life like a book. Just don't turn that last, very last page because once you do, it's over, you guys. Take care. I'm Richard of Nightmares. Tears, anyone? And Adriana. Hope you guys get some more snow. And Brittany, it was great talking with you the other day up in uh, Vancouver, BC. And hey, you guys, take care of yourselves. Be kind to others. And happy nightmares. I'll see you soon, you guys. Bye.